What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake. You're watching Rum and Cook. We're in the kitchen today. It's pouring outside. It gives me the perfect excuse to start a new series I've been thinking about. And really, we're not going to change the channel or anything like that. But what I want to do is I just want to sprinkle in some videos to kind of add some value and just give you some knowledge that I've developed over the years, right? So, you know, one of the things for me personally, when I have dinner parties and things like that, I like to take it to the next level, right? I like to add in some extra things that people just don't do. And I'm not saying I get adventuresome in food, but you know, I'm gonna make my own croutons. I might make my own bread. In fact, right now it's loud in here a little bit because we've got ribs going on behind you and I got sourdough bread made from scratch, right? There's a nice loaf. Got one more loaf in there. So I might make some fresh bread or I'll make some French bread or I'll make bread to make my croutons or to make my breadcrumbs or even to make some garlic bread. You know, certain things like that, whether it be a salad dressing, just little things that I can do to, to make the dinner that I serve next level. You know, at, at the end of the day, if you've got kids in the room, earmuffs, right? There's more than life than barbecue. A great steak is good, pulled pork is good, brisket is great, uh, but I like to do a couple other little things. So I thought I'd sprinkle some of that in there and you know my barbecue tools video was well received so here's the next kind of level of that what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you some tips and and some ideas think, things that i've learned over the years and if that interests you please subscribe to the channel don't forget to like the video and let's get into it so graders right if you watched my pizza videos um the one thing I said in there is that you should never buy pre-shredded cheese. You just shouldn't. Like, don't even let the thought enter your mind, right? It's got anti-caking agents in it and it doesn't melt nearly as good. And the cheese quality is not that good. You should buy a good quality cheese and grate your own, whether it be mozzarella, Parmesan, whatever, right? And, you know, we've got this guy that's been around forever. We've all done one of those or used one of those. You've got a little handheld guy. This guy here is great, right? This is a microplaner. I use this for garlic if I want to put some fine garlic in something. This is a great tool to have, uh, but this is you know useful for Parmesan. And this guy is a little bit thicker, right? What it is is you can use this for cheese if you want a thicker cheese, but also if I'm making burgers and I don't want chunks of onions in there, I'll take an onion on here and I'll, and I'll grate it fine right into it. Now, if hand grating seems a little too much work for you, you can get one of these guys. And I'll try and put links to all this stuff down below. I'll find it on Amazon for you. Uh, but this guy, you've got, you know, a fine one for Parmesan. We've got a thicker one for mozzarella, right? And this guy, this thing grates super quick. But essentially what you do is you lock it down to your surface, it's got a suction cup there, you put your meat or your cheese in there and you grind it, right? Don't put meat in there, it won't work very well. Uh, but this thing rips through it really quickly. And if that's still too much work for you, you need one of these guys. Now this guy here, this has gotta be, I don't know, 15 years old at least. I have a brand new one downstairs sitting in the box because it's so useful. Uh, but it's an, elect it's, uh, an electric grater, right? So you pull this out. So I've got the cheese one in here. It's got a slicer. Um, you can do vegetables and cheeses and stuff in it. Uh, but it's electric, so it rips through uh, cheese very quickly. So now you've got no excuses not to grate your own cheese. Um, bonus tip while we're here. This works awesome uh, if you slice up some potatoes and you put it in here and you grate them right onto a frying pan. You can make some great homemade hash browns. So with these few things, there is no reason you should ever buy grated cheese again. We'll get into a couple other things. Pepper, right? As you can see by the label, you probably can't read it, but this is like coarse ground pepper. Right, maybe I'll give you an overhead shot. Coarse ground pepper, used to buy it from Costco. The difference here is we've got whole peppercorns, right? We've got normal ones here. Then in here, this bag, I've got three different colors. We've got white, two different whites, 
uh, a red one and a black one. Doesn't matter which one you use. But the difference between a whole peppercorn and one that's already grinded it up for you is the smell and the flavor is vastly different. You're gonna get a much fresher taste out of this. Uh, it's gonna taste better on the food. When it's grinded up, that just doesn't, doesn't last very long. So you've got a couple different things. You know, you can use a, a grinder like that one. Uh, this one is one that I got from at bbq.com and I really like this because sometimes I've got some spices or some salts that are too thick and I'll just dump them in here and I'll make my own little blend. This thing's got a dial here so that it can go really, really coarse or really, really fine. And what I like about it is when you crank on it, it goes pretty quickly. This you can do a tablespoon or two of pepper with not breaking your wrist. Uh, but if you've got to do a, a large volume, what you should do is you should consider something like this. So this is just a spice grinder. Um, right, we've got a little area in here. My wife got this for me for Christmas and um, I haven't used it a lot yet. You can see that this is the last of my pepper because when you're doing a brisket, if you need a lot of salt and pepper, this is a great way to do this because you can buy it all ground up. Uh, but again, it's, it's better if you can grind it yourself. So I asked my wife, I said, one thing you could get me is a spice grinder. So I've used it a couple times. It's nice to have, even when you're making some ribs, useful thing to have. You know, you make, make a rub and away you go. And these are like, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks. So on that note, you have no reason to buy pre-ground uh, pepper ever again. Uh, it will really improve your, the taste of your food. Trust me on that. So let's get into salt. First one I'm gonna talk about this guy right here. Now, if you're anything like me, almost every grocery store you go to, you find Morton's kosher salt. Bought it for a long time. Uh, unfortunately, it's far closer to table salt than it is to sea salt. So do me a favor, pause the video, go over and throw that out. I'll wait. Good stuff. All right, so now that you've thrown that out, look, diamond kosher salt is 10 times better. It's got a better flavor and it's just an overall better salt. Again, I'm going to put a link to this below. That's the first step. If you're putting that on steaks, things like that, you want a coarse salt. Even when you make pasta, this makes a big difference in the quality of your pasta. Typically what I use is I always use a Himalayan pink salt. I don't buy table salt at all. I put it in a grinder like this so I can kind of adjust my, my um, coarseness, but using a pink salt over a table salt is definitely an improvement. And then you can get crazy on your salts. Like I got a little bit of an addiction here. Started to find some salts online and then um, I've always liked like a, a wine salt. So here's a Pinot Noir salt. I've got a Merlot salt. Jacobson makes some good salts. This is a Arctic Thyme sea salt. This is a lava salt. And then we got rosemary salt. Uh, this one is black pepper salt. It's actually, it's pretty good. Again, kind of want to grind your own pepper, but um, I've used this on ribs and it's actually pretty darn good. I've got a basil salt. This is cherry wood smoke salt. And this is a lemon zest salt. There's a whole bunch. I've got more over there. I didn't want to bring them all out. Um, but, you know, playing with salt has an impact on the flavor of your food. So you can dry different flavor salts and that'll help you out. And then finally, we've got what we call a finishing salt. Finishing salt is, doesn't have the, the impact that a, that a normal salt does. This is something you can sprinkle on right at the end. It just kind of makes that flavor pop. So if you haven't played with something like this, um, definitely worth trying out. So right off the bat, we got three different things that you should, you should make changes or consider. The fourth one is fresh herbs, right? So you can buy in a grocery store like this. This is fresh thyme in this case. Any grocery store has got them. They're usually in around the salads. They're usually kept cold. 
uh, unless it's basil. Basil you'll find out fresh. Uh, but using fresh versus dried herbs has a big impact on your flavor. You know, obviously with thyme, it can take a little bit more work to break off all those leaves, but if you're making a steak in a cast iron pan or whatever, you can throw a couple sprigs in and really get some flavor into it. What I like to do, I've got this guy back here. This is a, it's called a click and grow. Very similar, I think miracle Grow has their own product, uh, but it's hydroponic, right? So it's got different color lights that come on and it stays on all day. And right now it's at the top level, but when you're starting with new seeds, it comes down here. And then as things get high, uh, you just raise it up. Not that expensive, I think it's a couple hundred bucks and then you just buy your seeds. Uh, but if you subscribe to a seed package for, uh, it's, I don't know, it, it's changed a little bit. I think it's nine months or whatever. You get the unit for free. But I've got cinnamon basil here. I've got regular basil. I've got thyme. I've got sage. I've got rosemary. You can do chives. Now the chives you don't really get a lot with, so I don't usually do that, but the basil's really good, the thyme's good, and rosemary's good. So you can get some of that, and you just go over there, cut it off, and put it into your food. Uh, I think just switching to that, I mean, I use dried herbs when I'm making like a pasta or whatever. I always have dried herbs around that I use, but I will throw in some fresh basil. They're slightly different flavors, so when you blend them together, it really, really makes that meal pop. The next tip is really clean as you go. I mean, my wife will tell you that I will not start cooking with a dirty sink. I hate it. it. Drives me up the wall. And here's why. You know, as you're cooking, you're doing different things, and you're making a lot of dishes, right? Whether it just be utensils or it be bowls, frying pans, whatever, all of a sudden you get a full sink. And then you can, you, you know, you continue making your meal. And then at the end of your meal, you've got plates and everything on top of all those dishes. So my rule of thumb is clean as I go. The minute I get, I get dishes in my sink, I turn around, I clean them and I, and I put them out to dry and I move on to the next process. The benefit to that is, is that when my meal's all done, I don't have a whole ton of dishes that I just dread doing, right? So do yourself a favor and just develop that habit. It'll just make cooking a little bit more enjoyable because you won't have a huge mess to clean up at the end. My final tip is have fun. Cooking is one of those things that, you know, you can follow some recipes and it's not always gonna turn out the same. Um, you can cook an amazing steak one weekend and the next weekend is mediocre. Same goes for barbecue. Not all briskets are gonna turn out great. Not all pulled pork's gonna turn out great. It's an adventure, it's a learning process. You know, you need to fail in order to learn. So when you fail and you don't cook something up to your standards or what you're looking for, figure out what you did wrong and then correct the next time. Right, I've said it in other videos before, I don't measure any spices or anything like that. I do it all by eye. And yeah, I mean, sometimes my steaks are amazing, sometimes they're not, sometimes my chicken is amazing, sometimes it's mediocre, but it's all fun. I mean, that's, it's all part of the process. All you're trying to do is you're trying to build a bank of knowledge that you can draw from, and then in the end, you're gonna be a good cook. But you can't be a good cook until you failed a bunch of times, so don't let it get you down. Keep watching videos, and you're gonna learn all you need to know with lots of practice. So. That's all we've got today for you. All the videos in this series, I'm going to put hyphen level up at the end of them. That's how you know it's one of those ones. The next one will probably be on croutons. But thanks as always for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Doing new videos every weekend. I'll see you soon.